Okay. So uh, I'm one of your lecturers. My name is Ojo Israel, uh, and I'll be taking you uh, financial accounting for this uh, diet. Okay. So basically, let's just run through the rules so that we can be familiar with what is expected of us and what is not expected of us. So first one says that the students are muted on both audio and video. And the reason why students are always muted both on audio and video is to allow proper uh, communication and coordination of the, of the lecture so that there will not be interference from the student and back to the lecturer. And also there will not be um, miscommunication in between and it's not slow down the speed of the lecturer. And that one also you see that well, students are to be allowed to, well, to use, students are allowed to use chat button to ask questions. So if you want to interact, if you want to interact with us, if you want to ask questions, if you have any place that is unclear, please always try to use the chat button. I will check the chat button on a regular interval to note, to note if there's any chats that have dropped that need to be clarified. Another one also says that the student, the third rule says students are expected to be cordial and professional when using the chat button to ask questions or express their concerns. So this time we are talking about, okay, fine, you might have some concerns uh, about maybe uh, or clear question, you have maybe a clear uh, area that you want to ask or you are, you are, but your network is not actually is poor and you want to, uh, you want to communicate that. So try to, try, let us try to be cordial and professional in it. And it's saying that we be mindful of the language and the tone that we use so that, it's to, so that we can be professional and communication can be free of any uh, errors or any uh, transfer of, of aggressions. So another one that we have is students are advised to listen attentively during lectures rather than writing since the lecture materials will have been provided ahead of the class. So it's advisable for you to listen is advisable for you to follow the lecture instead of you trying to jot down because while you are trying to jot down, you might miss one or two points. So it's advisable for you to, uh, to listen attentively as we go on in the class, then you cannot go ahead and jot after it, maybe just few jots, but don't concentrate too much on the jottings. The other one that we have is that all questions will be attended to after the lecture. So this, this rule is flexible for the lecturer. The lecturer can decide to act to attend to the question in between the lecture or can decide to attend, to attend to the question at the end of the lecture, depends on the flow of the lecture. So it means that the answering of question is subject to the lecturer uh, review. They also, you always feel free, always be always know that you are free to call your lecturer and at the same time, you are free to ask your question to for, for that clarification, just to drive home the point. The major goal is that you understand what you are trying to do and you understand and put it down in your own language in the examination or so without making too much of our time let's kick in into the introduction of to financial statement so we do because this class is a revision class it means that it's a question or an answer class that i'll give you a question and we'll solve it together because there's no much time for us to be going into details but what we are going to say is we are going to give you what you need for you to pass your exams. And also we're gonna give you what you need for you to be able to practice in your area. So basically what we're having now is what we call introduction to financial statement. Introduction to financial statement. Before we start with what we call uh, financial accounting rather, before we start with your know, financial accounting, what do we understand? What led to financial accounting? What led to what, are, what, are, what, are, what activities? Or what engagement have we actually done to for the allow okay fine? You are not producing what we call financial statement. So, and that is basically the business. It's business. The reason why we have financials and information is because a business transaction has occurred. It means that what well, there is one activities that have been carried out to that that involve the movement of cash that can be in profit or loss to the person. So in that area, we can ask decide just, okay, let us look briefly into business. So what is business? Business is actually a set of interrelated activities carried out with a view to make profit. It means that these are the activities that you have decided to work, to carry out. These are the activities that you have, you have laid down 
that if you do this, this, and this, they are interlinked together. It will result to profit. And what is profit? Profit means the, the percentage that you receive that is higher than your cost price. The price that you have incurred to generate that cost price or the price that you have incurred to, uh, to bring, to render the service. So any amount higher than that is what regards to as profit. So we can easily say cost price plus profit equals selling price. So the sales of it is the profit element. And how do you get the profit element is as a result of what? Activities that you have done. So you doing different activities, either buying or selling in that IT servicing, in that uh, financial account, we are, you are preparing financial account for someone. Those are what? There are activities. And it's me, why are you doing those activities? The end goal is for profit purpose so that you can have more return than what you have invested into such business. So basically we have three types of business. We have basically, we have three types of business. We have the first one, we have the uh, sole proprietorship. We have sole proprietorship. Then after that as well, we have what we call the partnership. Then we have the companies. These are the three types of business that we have that we can classify forms or kind of business that we have. What do you understand by sole proprietorship? Sole proprietorship actually means a one-man business. So, so means one. Uh, sole proprietorship is what? It's what they mean a business, one-man business. It means that a one-man, a man set aside, set set aside to carry out business on his own, on his own. And it's actually have his own pros and cons. It has his own advantage and disadvantage. One of the advantage is that it makes quick, uh, quick decision. He make quick decision because it does not need to refer to anybody. So if because I'm the owner of my world and my business, I can decide to do anything within a twinkle of an eye. Like all these shops that we see most of the time, they are what they are so proprietorship. They are established on their own, they work by their own rules. And the major goal is to what to earn profits. One of the disadvantage that the debt of what or the debt of the so proprietorship can actually be the what the end of the business also they have a minimum capital they can access in order for them to start their business or to expand their business so another type of business that we have is partnership the reason why you need to know types of business is because their account varies and when we go further into this course you see how the world how these accounts are being prepared so what to understand by partnership partnership is actually a legal business organization owned by at least two persons and at most of all, 20 person who put their resources together, no profit for what? For profitability purpose. It means when two people, you know, when they are one, even if one person start the business, it's so partnership. Now, when they are two and they are between two to 20, then we can call them partnership. It means that people that have the similar what, similar idea, people that have the same interest to, and to, 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 to engage themselves into a particular activities to yield a return for them. So if uh, if two or three of us have an idea of okay, this kind of business, let's go to the, into this business, and we fashion out the way of us doing that business, then we can regards to what that, that, what, that kind of business is what we call partnership. And partnership is actually being run or being governed by what we call deal of partnership. Deal of partnership. So deal of partnership states every rules that governs how the partners behave, that governs how the profit is being shared, that governs when there's conflict of interest, what, are the, what is the deal of interest, what are they agreed on? And this is what will be bind, binding on the partners. So that's we have partnership. So I believe you have partner, for example, your audit firms, most of all the audit firms are, what, are partner based on partnership. That's why I call them partner one, partner two, partner three, because it's a combination of two or more people or maximum of 20 to come together because they have the same interest. They are coming together to render service that will yield profit at the end of the day. So they, at the end of the day, they write, okay, something and cool, all these people and cool, they are what? They are types of partnership. Then another one that we have is company. We have company as well. So what do you understand by company? Company is actually uh, a lega. So we have a lega or the lega policy with, uh, without physical existence, recognized by law to do business for profit through its agent and servant who exists physically. Now, this is called this company. Company is actually uh, a legal person. It means that legal by law, you are seen as what? As a physical woman being. You are recognizing it 
as a physical and live woman being. That's what we call what that's what we call a company. And it means they must be registered. Registered with CAC. CAC will be the one to give them the license and now establish them or bring them to life by giving them their license. So once the license is given to them and the certificate of corporation is given to them, it means that that kind of, that, that is the day that they get the company into being, into being. So that's where we have the company like that. So another one that we have is what we call the, okay, so these are the three types of business. That are the three types of business with that we have. So they're not known to wait too much time. Let's look at financial statements, uh, financial accounting. What do you understand by financial accounting? Because we said that the topic is introduction to financial accounting. Introduction to financial accounting. So what do you understand by financial accounting? Financial accounting deals with preparation. So when I say financial accounting, it deals with what? With preparation of financial statements for the basic purpose of providing information to various interested groups like creditors, banks, shareholders, financial institutions, governments, and consumers. Now, basically what I'm saying is that when we talk about accounting, accounting is actually be defined as a systematic way of recording, analyzing, classifying, summarizing, interpreting the financial information to the users. And based on that, we have two types of users. We have the uh, internal uh, what, and external users. The internal users are those that are involved in running of the activities, in running of the business activities. People that are, they are internal, they are involved in it. Example of them are the MD, the managers, the, uh, the labor, the staff, also the, what, the uh, manager, the staff. These are people that are, they are inward, they are inside when the such activities actually happen. Then we now have another one also talks about the uh, the uh, external. So external are people that are outside. They were the, that they are not involved in the run of the business. They are actually external. They have no right or legal right to ask you for a particular information, but they need their information to, to make economy decision. They need your financial statement to make economy decision. So example of external users are the government. The government is one of the example of user users. They want to know the total tax that you want that is due for you to pay. Another example also is the researchers, the students and researchers. You know, when we are back in the university and they want to carry out a project, they ask you for data in I think chapter three or yeah, chapter chapter three or chapter four. They ask, they ask for what to collect data. When you collect data, you now want to transport it. So how do you collect data? You from some time you collect data from the financial statement so they make use of that as well so um so that is the two types of what of financial statement users that we that we have so that's basically let's look into basis basis of accounting basis of accounting is actually what it means the method or the basis or the techniques that have been adopted to record the elements to record expenses and to record income as regards to what as regards to the uh, to the agreed way of recording it so we have basically we have three types of basis in our financial accounting we have the accrual basis we have the cash basis we have the breakup basis like i said this basis is just what is the one that allow us to treat a part, uh, expenditure in a particular manner it allow us to treat as uh, income in particular manner so now under accrual basis how do we treat income under accrual basis how do we treat expenditure accrual basis actually says that what that the income should be recorded income should be recorded in our financial statement when they are end when they are end and expenditure should be recorded in our financial statement when they are incurred you may now if you mark the word i, I make use of the word end and incurred end and incurred. Now, it means that it's possible that you have earned a particular revenue, but you are yet to be paid that money. But because you have rendered the service and you have earned it, which means it's due to, for you, it's due for you, uh, they are going to pay you in the future, then you can go ahead and record it in your financial statement as revenue, as income, as inflow into your organization. And also, the other one also is talking about incurred. Incurred in saying that you have not paid the expenditure. 
You are people is owing you, you are owing for someone's salary, you are here to pay the salary. It means that you have incurred the expenditure because it's subject to payment in the future. So what do you do? You record it, not when you pay. So that's the accrual basis. So accrual basis is all revenue is recorded when they are earned, and expenditure is recorded when they are what? When they are incurred. When they are incurred. They will now have the cash basis, what? The cash basis. Now, this cash basis is actually talking about that what that under the uh for income. For income, income or revenue is recorded in financial statement when they are received. Can you see not when they are in now? On that cash basis, when they are received. And expenditure is recorded in the financial statement when they are paid. When they are paid, it means that any transaction that does not involve movement of cash will not be recorded in the financial statement as or if they are using cash basis. If they are using cash basis. Now, note, accrual basis and cash basis. Accrual basis and cash basis make use of what? They make use of a particular concept, a particular concept. And the concept that they make use of is going consign concept. The concept is talking about that the business will continually be in existence for next foreseeable future. For next foreseeable future. It means that there is, at that point, when you are preparing the financial statement, you cannot tell when the when the company will die or when the company will fold up. So that's why what that's why you that's what we call going consign concept. But for breakup for breakup basis, this breakup basis is against the going consign concept because it's talking about what the debt or locate, liquidation of a company. It's talking about the debt or liquidation of a particular company. Look at that fine. Okay, what is the what, what is the company right now? What are they what are they into? Okay, now in the beginning of the year, it's possible that the company will not be in existence in December. By October, the company will be liquidated. Now, if that does the case, it means that the basis you normally record financial statement, you record the revenue at the point in which you want you make it. If you are not receiving it, you know, because it's break up. So it's subject because you are not going to be in continuous. So it's not advisable for you to work. So for you to be recording a revenue that you have not received because it's break all basis. Now for the expenditure, you have to incur it. You have to what you have to record it, even though you have incur, even though you have not paid, you have to recur it because they use what we call prudency concept. By the time that you are setting it, there's some hierarchy. There are that one hierarchy of payments when you are liquidating a company, who you are expected to pay for, followed by the next. The next, the next, then the shareholder is the last. The less shareholders is the least people. It means that after you have paid your vendors, you have paid yourself, you have paid your the venture people, then the leftover will now be the one that will be paid to what to the shareholders who are the owners of the company. Who are the owners of the company? So we have so we open a re realizable account to all the sales of assets and transfer of cash until what until the uh the company is finally liquidated so big up basis is not used to prepare financial statement when it is in going consign but is used to prepare financial statement when the going consign will not be in place will not be in place okay so that that about the uh basis so let's look at financial statement so what to understand by financial statement remember we said financial accounting is actually the process of work or preparing financial statement now what is the financial statement financial statements are actually written document records that convey the financial activities and condition of the business of an entity financial statement is actually a detailed information in a quantitative format and also qualitative format to show the financial transaction or to show the financial activities that have occurred within a particular period of time and that period of time is known as financial year accounting period or reporting period. So it means that my any if I prepare financial statement to show my activities, how inflow and outflow, how my operating activities are being operated or are being carried out during the year. And also I'll now look at, okay, fine, for which period? Always for 12 months. The financial year or the accounting period or the reporting period is always what? 12 months, 12 months. 12 months, that's the after your what after the initial year when you begin. Initial year when you when you just open your organization, you're allowed to prepare your financial statement for 16 months. 
But after that first time of your financial statement, or every financial statement month will fall in for 12 months, must fall in for 12 months. And that period is what we call financial year or accounting period or reporting period or reporting period. So please always note your financial statement is to show you financial activities and condition of the business to state what you have added to the business and what the condition and the condition of the business in regards to the uh, equity, the owners, if the owner is paying well or not. Now, what are the content of financial statements? Statutorially, in according to IAS1, it states that financial statement actually compared to what it states, it gave us five things that are at least minimum of five things that must be in your financial statement. But other things also can be what can be added. So what are these five things? You can ask if they ask you, what are the five statements that is statutorily required to be included in the financial statement? So they're asking for the content of financial, financial statement. The first one is a statement of financial position. This statement of financial position is formerly known as balance sheet in the old days. It's formerly known as what? As balance sheet. But now it has been revised and it has the name statement of financial position. And that is the one that tells the position, the current situation and position of the organization as at the end of the year, as at that date, it will tell us. Then the next one we have is the statement of profit or loss account and other compressive income. These are the, oh, this is the second statement that you expect to have. The second statement that you expect to have. And this one is always prepared for the year. The activities for the year, the major reason why you are into business, that is your operating activity. So it will be in a particular word, in a particular account, so called profit or loss account. And that information will now be used. Okay, okay, what have I done? Have I generated profit for the year or have I made loss for the year? So in that account, you see income, you see income and expense, expenses, income and expenses. These are the thing, two, two things that you're going to see there. Then the next one we talked about is the statement of changes in equity. Now, equity, general statement of equity is talking about, okay, at the beginning of the year, what do we have? Okay, what have happened during the year that have made a difference or that caused a difference between the beginning of the month and the ending and the opening balance and what and the closing balance to understand what have happened in between the year, to understand what have happened in between the year. Another one that we have, another statement, what we call statement, a statement of what? Cash flow statement. This one is talking about that you, you have interest to know the areas where money is being spent and where money is being or where money are spent and where money flows into the organization. Into the organization. That is what that we call a uh, statement of cash flow. So we look at that as well. That's according to IES 7. So we look into that. The next one we have is notes to the financial. Statement. So this note of the financial statement is a backup of the preparation of financial statement that we have done. That's the preparation of uh, preparation of statement of financial position and statement of income and loss account. Okay. So that's what it's trying to what it's trying to do here. Now, okay. What what are the what what are the principles that we have adopted? What are the techniques that we have adopted? What are the estimates that we have adopted or we are trying to use for the transaction or that we have used for the transaction that have been recorded in that in the statement of financial position or statement of profit or loss accounts. So after that being said, we have an element, element of financial statement. You understand we have talking about, we have talked about the content of financial statement. Now we want to talk about element of financial statement. Now element of financial statement means the block on which the financial statement is prepared. You know, without the block, then the ask and understand. So now look at what are the blocks that actually give shapes to what the financial statement. So there are five in numbers. We have the asset, the liability, we have the equity, income, and expenses. These are five things. There. And you must know this because going forward in the standard, in the standard, there's something that you need to know. You need to know the measurement and recognition. Measurement and recognition is very, very key and important. You need to know. And recognition is as a result of the definition of the element of financial statement, of the element of financial statement. Now, assets, what do you understand by assets? Assets are actually what the resources, 
controlled by an entity as a result of past event in which what there will be inflow of economy benefit into the organization into the organization now basically to put it down you say assets are resources control it means that if i, I can, if i have a motor vehicle and i control the motor vehicle i can number one i can say okay i can be considering it for asset but it have to fulfill the what the definition of the what, of the asset in totality not just part area and what and leave the rest no it has to feed the uh it has to comply with the definition of asset before you cannot go ahead and treat that transaction as the asset transaction so we have that so we did what to so we have asset and resources control when talking about resources control we are talking about the we are talking about um like a motor vehicle that i can deny anybody from having access to it I can I can deny anybody from partaking or enjoying in the asset. So that's the way I control it. Why am I controlling it as a result of past events? What are the past events that we are referring to? The past event that we are referring to here is talking about the uh, the past event that we are talking about referring to is talking about the commitment that you have made in the past that have make you to own that motor vehicle. For example, I say motor vehicle. So what are the past events I've paid for the transaction? So I cannot claim, I can make claim on it that yes, this is what, this is my vehicle because I have pay, make payment purchase in the last month when it was purchased. So that is what, that is what we call as a result of past event in which the word settlement, that will be settlement, uh, or in which, there, sorry, in which there will be inflow of economic resources. Now inflow of economic resources that, oh, this motor vehicle that I have now, if I could not start using it, what is the uh, benefit, economic benefit I'm going to derive from it? That's the word, that's the economic benefit. So it must be, it must be inflow, not outflow. So the benefit that you derive from your motor vehicle to run your business for that year is what we regard to our word as inflow of economy resources. So your resources man is not composed, it should be cash low and can be as a result of time, it can also be as a result of other things. So it's not composed what? It's time alone. They will not have liability. What do you understand by liability? Liability is actually being defined as a present obligation as a result of past events in which the settlement will lead to an outflow of economic resources from the entity that embedded embedded it. It means that a present ob obligation that's a debt, a present obligation that is a debt on its own. So, which means uh, or the liability can be. In quote and unquote, it was regarded as debt in saying that their present obligation, why the present obligation as a result of past events. It means if I'm owing my staff salary and I'm, I'm putting that as liability, the reason why I have it as liability because it's present obligation at the moment I'm owing people. So it is present obligation. But why am I owing them as a result of past events? They have rendered service to me in the past that they are due to for to be paid. So I can say that, well, okay, yes, it's, for, it's following with the what? With the salary payable is in line with the law of liability. I will now look at, okay, the settlement will lead to economy, what? Outflow of economy resources, settlement. It means that once I pay the salary, my resources will go out. My resources will go out in form of what? In form of cash. In form of cash. It means that once I settle this liability, even though it's after six months I settle liability, it will result to what? Loss of economy which means that will reduction in your economy resources economy resources so that is basically uh li li liability that is because basically liability and that one that we have is equity what's everyone understand by equity equity is actually as a result of what the net residual interest on the assets it means that after you have removed your asset and your liability the left balance the balance there is for the uh, the balance there is for the uh, is for the shareholders, the owner of the business. So that is the equity. That is the equity is the net what based on the definition of contract is a one is the net residual interest on the net asset. Is the residual interest on the net asset. That is what we call equity. Now, what do you understand by income? What do you understand by income? Now, income is actually very straightforward in the sense that. Income can be defined or can be explained in light of that is an increase in the economy benefits 
during the accounting period in form of inflow or enhancement of assets. That is an income. Income in the sense that what is an increase in economic benefit during the accounting period. So it's an increase. So when your economic benefit increase as they during the year, you can regard that as an inflow, as an income rather, as an income. So we have that. So income actually we've been breaking down into two. We have two type of income. We have the revenue and gains. We have revenue and gains. Revenue is actually what is an increase in the activities or what to be based on the ordinary cost of activities. That what we call the what the uh, that what we call the prepared per minute or that. Let me just try to get that. Okay, so let's back. Thank you. So back to the class. So we are talking about that. So that's basically the income. Income as defined as an increase in the uh, enhancement or increase in the business as a result of uh, inflow or enhancement of what of an asset. So after I've defined that, I will now say what are the types of income that we have. We have two types of income. We have revenue and gain. Gain revenue is actually the inflow based on the ordinary cost of the activities. It means that the major reason why I am into business, I'm actually what, I'm actually fulfilling it and I'm getting an inflow from it. So I can call that revenue because I'm selling cars. So once anytime I, I make sales of cars, is the revenue to me. Then the other part is gain. Gain actually resides outside, well, outside the ordinary cost of the business. It means if I dispose of an asset, or I carry out any other thing that is not in line with my day-to-day -day activities in the organization, and it brings me a surplus, we can regard it to as gain. So that's why we say gain on asset disposal, not revenue on asset disposal. We call it gain because it's not in cost, it's not in due cost to your purpose of ordinary business, original business, original business. So another one that we have is expenses. Expenses. What are the expenses that we have? Expenses actually is an, a decrease. Expenses a decrease from what of activities of economic resources. A decrease of economic resources are part of that, that can result to what maybe due to a reduction in assets or enhancement of liability. So when your liability increase, your expenses also increase. Or when your asset decrease, it means that what your expenses is increasing. So these are that's expenses. Okay. Apart from the amount that is being paid as to the shareholders, that apart from the amount that is being paid as to shareholders, so anything that increases your liability or reduces your assets, apart from the money or fund that is being paid as to the shareholders in form of dividends, can be regarded to as expenses. Can be regarded to as expenses. So these are the five elements that you have, and you need to know these five elements of financial statement because it will guide you. And energize you or enable you to uh, to go far in this course. In this course, it's actually very, very, very important for you to know. Then we now have accounting process. Uh, accounting process is talking about the step by step in which we pass the stages that is involved in uh in before we prepare financial statement. That's accounting process. The stages, the processes that have been stated out to show or to enrate or to list. The half or levels in preparing the financial statement, the levels of preparing the financial statement. So the first one that we have here says that collecting and analyzing accounting documents. So collecting and analyzing accounting document is number one that we have. Then after that, we have the second one is posting into journals. Posting into journals. Journals is actually what is a daily transaction. It's what is it? That's why you call another name for journal. It's called um, daily books. Daily daily books. It means that when transaction occur, the first point or the first place in which you record the transaction into is the journal. That's why you call it daily books. Or or what? Or yes, uh, books. Day book. We call it day books or daily book, and that's journal. It means that when transaction occur, after you have collected, you have collected it, you have analyzed it. And what is a document, maybe receipt or invoice or performing invoice, you have collected it and you now want to go ahead and now make entry. The first thing is just to enter your journal. It has to enter your journal. And your journal will show the circle the way the account will be debited and the account will be credited. It will also it will also show a narration. 
so that whenever you go back to that transaction after 20 years or after 15 years, you'll be able to know the reason why you are what you have raised that journal. So the narration will be will be a will be of help to clarify the narrative to clarify areas, to clarify areas that are unclear during the what when the when you prepare probably when you have prepared it you do you have forgotten it will help you to now revise it and so oh, this is the reason why we raised this journal so you are good to go the other one also is posting after you have done with journal you now post into the ledger account the ledger account is actually what is the principal book of account is the permanent work way where we record financial statement so we lift from journal down to ledger accounts now journal journal is vague journal varies over time, you just add different, different figure from one journal to another journal. But ledger, ledger helps to bring transactions that have the same, uh, the same uh, traits, the same features under a particular head. So that at a particular time, you can know the total income or the total expense or the total what you call profit or profit and minus from the account. Then you can know the balance at a glance. It means that it, your bank statement is a form of a ledger. Because at, the, at, the, at the, every particular point in time, you can state the amount that you have or the amount that you don't have in your accounts. That's what that's a ledger. So it helps you to what to add to bring in together every transaction of similar the, or, or that is uh, that uh, the same or in nature. Then you bring them together to form a what to form a ledger. Then after you have prepared your ledger, you now move ahead to your trial balance. You now move ahead to trial balance. So trial balance is actually a statement that what that tests the accuracy of the ledger balance. That's trial balance. Trial balance is what is a statement. So it's not an account. It's a statement that tests the accuracy of the ledger balance because on the trial balance, the debit side and the credit side must be the same. Once the debit side and the credit side is not the same, it means that what probably one or two things have happened. And how do we prepare? Uh, we prepare our trial balance from the ledger account. Is the balance figure from the ledger account that we posted under our trial balance, under our trial balance. So after we have prepared our trial balance, they will now move on posting of adjustment entries. So at the end of the month or at the end of the year, there are some adjustments that we normally post. There are some adjustments that we normally raise and post. An example of them is what we call depreciation. Depreciation, one of the adjustments that is always done at the end of the year or at the end of the month in order for us to prepare a complete financial statement. A complete financial statement because if, if you are, well, why I, what are you going to depreciate if you have not yet closed out for the month? So it's when you are done for the month, you know, we can now calculate the total resources that you have enjoyed or that you have benefited from the what from the uh from the assets from the asset. Then after that, we have another one that we have is provision for bad debt, also is also um month end or year end. To adjust for the transaction that have, what, that have not been taken care of. So after you have done that, after you have posted into your ledger, then you now have what we call adjusted trial balance. Adjusted trial balance. So this adjusted trial balance is a, is the trial balance of the uh, the initial adjustment entry, the position of provision for bad debt that you have made. We now give you a better and complete and what a better complete and ready made. Trial balance, which you do know as the adjusted trial balance, it's from this adjusted trial balance that we now move to the next stage. And the next stage is what is the uh preparation of financial statement. So, with this understanding, you can know that what your uh, financial statements are prepared for trial balance because trial balance all the balances of all ledger. So, to go ahead and prepare your financial statement from that account is actually what straightforward, it's straightforward. Then after that, we now have what posting close trial balance because the reason is that the trial balance, the adjusted trial balance, shows us for this year and for next year we need to have what closing or uh, closing trial balance. So it means that the, if I'm year 2019 now and I have trial balance for 2019, at the end of 2019, I'm expected to have a trial balance that will serve as opening trial balance for me in year 2020. That's what we call what post closing trial balance. It means every expenses and, re and revenue will be taken out and the leftover, which is the liability, the asset and equity will be now computed to what to it will now be taken over to serve as an opening figure in the next year. That's what we call post closing trial balance. 
So before we move, so we have a question here that we can we look into. But before we move into the question, let us talk about rule of double entry. Rule of double entry. So the rule of double entry is actually first of all, um, I believe that you are aware and familiar with some of them. So what are the rule of double entry? Number one is that what when we can use asset, we have two ways of doing it. You can either go ahead and use what and use the you can either go ahead and use the uh account type of account, or you can go ahead and use the element of financial statement to know or to drive home your point as regards to the uh as regards to the word posting as regards to the double entry. So you need to what you need to know what you are going to drive home as regards to the double entry. So in this line, I will now ask you, what do you want us to do? Uh, to use element on account. So I'm going to use element. I'm going to use element to give it because I didn't explain the account to you. So I'm going to use element to or explain the rule of double entry. So let's start with assets. So assets. Now, how do we, when do we uh, debit asset? When do we credit asset? The rule says that whenever the asset account is increasing, Whenever the asset account is increasing, which means if it's going up, what you do is you debit that account. But whenever asset account is reducing, which means what decreasing, what do you do? You credit that account. Please, it's very, very important. You can even write it out. It's very, very important. Example, when you have a cash account, is an example of what on my asset account. Once you are giving it, once you are, once you are giving, what do you do? You credit your bank account to show the amount that you have let go. Then after that, you now go to the world, okay? To the other area, to the other account that's been affected. But if money is coming into your account, what do you do is that you debit the account to show the increase or the effect of the money that came in into the account. So we have that for asset. Now for liability, its own rules also is straightforward. It means that whenever liability is increasing, Anytime liability is increasing, you credit the liability. But anytime liability is decreasing, or what is decreasing, you debit the liability. So because you are taking it out for me. So the asset and liability operate opposite, opposite each other. Even whereas the even the truth is the uh the assets, the assets actually move in line with expenses. The assets move in line with expenses. It means that when asset it goes up, you debit it. When expenses goes up, you debit it. But when expenses come down, you credit it because you are taking away the provision of what what have the provision for you before. You are taking it away because you no longer need it. What I'm saying is, you have been given twenty thousand naira to go and carry out the particular task. At the end of the day, now what you brought back fifteen thousand. So you expect that five thousand is as a result of what a result of gain. So that's credit liability. So if I credit your account with twenty thousand naira before, now you have returned it back to me. It means that I need to reduce the twenty thousand naira. So I will come back to the debit side. And I would and I would debit that side with the what with the difference with the difference. Another one that we have there is what we call the equity. Equity may move in line with liability. They use the same liability they the rules, which means that whenever equity increases, you credit equity, and whenever equity decreases, what do you do? You debit equity or equity. Then we now have the income. The income moves alongside with the liability because when income increases. You credit income account, and when income decreases, you what you debit that account to take away the element of the initial sales that have been recognized. To take away the element of what the initial sales that have been recognized, that have been recognized. So basically, that is the law of what of the double entry, and I beg your view, you need to know it before you take it before you step into the exam. You must know this. Because it will help you and assist you a lot to do one or two things. To do one or two things. So let's go on. Let's go on with question one. Let's look at question one. Now we are going to start with journal. From journal, we proceed to ledger. From ledger, we produce to try balance and so on and so on forth like that. So that we're able to want to see the uh, how this accounting process is being used in the real life or what for exam purposes as well. So now, what do you understand? So let's look at question one. Question one says that um, July 1st, Israel introduced 40,000 cash as capital. We have information also July 2nd to Israel borrowed 60,000 naira 
to purchase a van. So we have all information like this. Now looking at this one, we have a call post all transaction to Jonas. Post all transaction to Jonas. Okay, so um, we're talking about post all to Jonah. So we expect to raise Jonah. And this is the place why they normally test. They test this, this place a lot, a lot because you are in foundation or what we call knowledge level. So you expect to work. They will test your foundation in FA, in FA. They want to know how rooted and grounded you are. So whenever they test Jonah, they are trying to test your root, your understanding about the, the double entry rule, about the double entry rule. So let's post, let's just post into this, let's see. Uh, before you post, I will, let me cancel the solution. Please, you have your solution with you. So I will beg you to listen with me, uh, the listing now so that you can get it. So that anytime you can you go back to your post, to your, to your solution that have been sent to you. And from there, you can pick what you want, okay? Now, question one. Question one says, July 4th, Israel introduced 40,000 cash as cash capital. Now the question is, who is receiving, who is giving? That is the first question you need to ask yourself. Who is receiving and who is giving? So from here, we know that the word cash as capital. So they introduce cash as capital. So now, if that's the case, if I introduce cash to the business, that's because cash is one collecting it. Please always know. If I introduce cash to the I'm paying that money into a particular or into a particular place. That's cash accounts. But who is bringing the money? Because every transaction has two legs. Minimum of what? Minimum of two legs. Every transaction has minimum of two legs. So we are talking about cash as capital. Who is bringing in the money? The person, the account that is bringing in the money is capital. Because we are adding it to what? To start up a business. So the capital account is uh, bringing the money. Why the what the bank or the cash account will be the one to work to receive the money? So we have identified that cash and bank. I'm sorry, you have as well that cash and capital are the account involved in the preparation or reason of this journal. Then, if that's the case, we cannot go ahead and say, okay, which one should we debit? Which one should we credit? Because now we know the two accounts that are involved. The next question is which account should we debit? Which account should we credit? So if you look at the question very well, you say uh, Israel introduced, introduced 10, 40,000 cash as capital. So capital is the one word giving. Definitely capital is increasing. And the rule says that whenever equity, which is capital, capital falls under equity elements. Whenever equity increases, you what? You credit the account. And whenever cash decreases, what do you do? You, uh, you debit it. So when your cash receives, you debit it. When your cash increase, you debit it. Now let's look at the solution. The solution will be the same. So there's no need to be afraid. So can you see the solution here? Yeah? So with this is journal, this is the format for journal. We have the date for journal. We have the particulars. Then after the particular, we have the debit and, and the credit column. So that it's the column or what was what called journal, the journal format that we have. So basically, we have what called we have the cash account and the capital account, like I said, there are the two accounts there. So and we know that cash account is one receiving. So we debit cash account with 40,000 euros. Number one. Number two is that is capital account that is what uh, that is giving. So you credit the capital account. So capital account is increasing. And the loss is that whenever as equity increases, what do you do to it? You credit it. So that's what that's why you have that for there. Okay, going back to the second transaction, let's look at the second transaction. The July 20, July 2nd, July 2nd, Israel uh borrows nine sixty thousand naira to purchase a van. So now this time around they borrowed money to purchase the van. So because they borrowed money does not mean that the money was paid directly into the van account. Are you with me? It means that money, this is what it means. It means that money was borrowed and the money that was borrowed was used to pay for the van. So it is better for you to be, or for us to be on the server side, since they didn't state it, that the money was paid directly to the bank. For us to be on the server side, we cannot go ahead and what and prepare what's called uh, 
You cannot go ahead and recognize cash account first and loan account. So loan, loan, loan account is the giver. Loan account is the giver, while cash account is the receiver. Then from, from that amount received or from the, the, from the amount debited into the cash account, we now be used to what? We now be used to increase the cash account. So we have, okay, so I, we have A, we have A, B, C. We have A, B, C. So you want to loan for a one loan from A to C, but you can't go straight to C. So you have to go A to B. So when you have A and B there together, you have to do the transaction from, from two sides. Remember, I said three sides. This is side where the giver, this is the receiver, and that is another receiver, the purpose. So we have the giver, the receiver, and the purpose. So the relationship we have to win, the money have to move from the giver down to the receiver. So this is the loan account that is giving the cash account. So whenever the loan account give, what do you do? You credit it because its own liabilities is increased. The loan account is liability. And once liability increases, you debit, you credit it. Then you now go to the other one, which is cash account. So what is the cash account? Cash account is saying that, oh, okay, cash account have received the money. Oh, thank you. There are a lot of what have entered. We have received the money. So your cash increases. And once your cash increases as an asset, you what? You debit it. But remember, we have only done just for buyer and seller. But what about the other end? So you now go back to the other end and say, okay, why do we even borrow the money in the initial place? The reason why we borrow the money in the initial place is to what? Is to purchase motor van, to purchase motor van. So I'll come back here and I'll put, oh, motor vehicle. Oh, sorry, please correct it. This should be 60,000. This should not be 40,000. This should be 40 or uh, 60,000. That should be 60,000. So this should be 60,000. So that 60,000 is what we now use to work to debit your motor vehicle. Motor vehicle account is an asset account. So once it's increasing it, you you debit that account. So you don't put debit your motor vehicle with 40,000. That's why it's 60,000. Please correct that to 60,000. Then the second leg we go to where, where who is giving the money now? Remember, no loan account is not the one giving it now. But the person that is giving it now is cash account because he has initially paid into cash. So the person that we give it right now is what? Is cash account. So that, that's why we what? That's why we now their uh, credit cash with the 60,000. It should be 60,000, please. 60,000, 60,000. So that is that about the uh, second one. So let's look at the third one. So I will just explain the third one. I will not go to the solution. They are all the same. Okay, so that we can be fast and we can look at other things. So we have what we have this to be July 3. Our uh, Israel buys inventory for 18,000 era on credit. Now Israel purchased this of what 18,000 era on credit. Now, what are the treatments? Remember that this is on credit. So your purchase account will be there. Your purchase account will be there. So what is your purchase account? Sorry about that. So it's a purchase account. So you look at your, okay, my purchase account is receiving. My purchase account will be the one to receive the goods purchased. Oh, that is good. Okay, so what is the second leg? The second leg is on credit. This is this, not bank. This was not paid for when it was purchased. We can't go ahead and credit bank accounts. So we can only go ahead and do what? And create what we call trade payable. Trade Payable. It means that this is a liability. This is amount that is payable to the vendors at a particular point in time. At a particular point in time. That is what that is what we call it. So you go ahead and do debit purchase account and credit trade payable. Credit trade payable. They will now look for July 5th. July 5th says that uh Israel paid a supplier 10,000. So now they are not pay a supplier. Remember. But the supplier vendors are, are also inter, you use interchangeably. So if you look at that, we bought chase inventory of 18,000. But out of that 18,000, we are paying 10,000 naira for me. So how do we account for that? So the way we account for that, just okay, Israel pays. Where is it coming up from? Oh, it's coming up from cash. Okay, number one cash account. Then number two is that Israel pays is a supplier. Supplier as well, vendor account, trade payables. So these are the two accounts that have involved here. The cash account is involved here, and also the trade payables are involved here. These are the two accounts account that are involved here. So trade payables is actually what a liability. 
Now, you say that whenever liability uh, reduces, what do you do to it? You debit the account with the amount. Because once it's reducing, it means that you are be able to save money. You are be able to, well, you are paid out money. So you, well, you reduce your liability by debiting your liability since you have initial entry of credit balance. Then after that being said, you now move on to the next one. We'll talk about the uh, Israel sales inventory for 12,000 Naira. So if I'm looking at that, I'll look at two accounts that are involved, which is the sales account and the what, and the, uh, so the sales account, uh, uh, the two accounts involved on that inventory is the inventory account and revenue or sales account, revenue or sales account. And that the amount is 12,000. So which one I go to credit? You always credit your revenue because your revenue is like, well, it's a credit item. So it's an income, an income element. An income element says that whenever income increases, you credit it. And once income reduces, you what? You debit it. So for this reason, the amount that was, the amount that was paid for in our inventory will be recorded under the inventory account or uh, under the inventory account, under the inventory account. Then after that, we have the, okay, so it will be given under the inventory account and we pay cash. So we debit the inventory account and credit cash and credit cash. So another one that we have is saying that July 7, uh, July 7, Israel sell inventory for 9,000 Naira on cash. Now they make sales of 9,000 Naira on cash as well. So on credit this time around, not on cash, 9,000 Naira on cash. So if you remember in the initial one that we, that we did, which is on July 6th, we're talking about credit work cash account, but now that they don't have, they have not paid for it, normally is that you debit, I'm sorry, you credit uh, payables, you credit other payables, you credit, no, sorry, you credit trade payables, you credit trade payables, you credit trade payables, and trade, credit, uh, trade payables are example of, uh, trade payables are example of um, liability. It falls under liability. Then the second leg goes to where? Your inventory account. July 10, what do we have in July 10? We have July 10, Israel received 5,000 Naira of money owned to him by the customer. So Israel received 5,000 Naira. So now this time we're talking about receive. Now remember that we are okay. Sorry, apologies, please. Uh, July 7, Israel sells. He said, he sells, he makes sales. So once he makes sales, your two account, two account are involved here. Apologies for this. When you make sales, let me just repeat, let me re re explain this, please. I thought it was purchased. Oh, uh, July 6th, Israel sells inventory for 12,000 Naira cash. Now, if they make sales, the two accounts are involved. The two accounts involved is the cash accounts and the revenue accounts. So you credit your revenue. I think I explained that correctly. You credit your revenue account and you debit your cash account. Now for July 7th, Israel sell inventory, for 9,000 Naira on credit. Now for this 9,000 Naira on credit, what you do is that you credit your uh, your payable, your trade payable and you debit your what? Your revenue, you debit your revenue. So another one that we have is July 10, Israel received 5,000 Naira of money owned to him by the customer. Now this is trade receivables. This is trade receivables. It's that two accounts are involved here. Since we have 9,000 Naira on trade receivables before, so this time around, we now have what? We now have 5,000 Naira on trade receivables. Now, if you look at July 7, we said that what? That it should be on trade receivables and revenue. And trade receivables is on the debit side. But out of that debit side now, you have paid 5,000. So if it's reducing, if your asset is reducing, the standard says that we should what? That we should uh, credit it. The standard says that we should credit it. So on this aspect, on this note, trade receivables will be debited with 5,000 Naira. Why so we will trade the receipt will be credited with 5,000 naira why the customer account why the customer account or what we call the uh, cash account will be credited. So this one I'm so if you look at the solution, if you look at the solution here, can you see the solution here? So we have cash accounts, cash account because if money was received, so cash account if cash account are happy. They are saying, oh money have entered, money have entered, so they are happy. So what once money enter. You debit the account with 5,000. Where is the money coming from? It's coming from trade pay receivables because you have carried out the tra transaction earlier and it's resided in what in trade receivables. So you need now to take it out of trade receivables. 
So for this one, I explained sales. Sales also is explained about as a revenue account. Sales also is revenue as a revenue account. So that's what we have. So everything I've explained, they are all the same. Yeah. Now, if you look at question two, question two is not talking about ledger. We are the same scenario. The same scenario is now advised. They are now asked us to prepare ledger. Remember when I talked about the accounting process? I talked about the accounting process and I said that the accounting process starts with the uh, collecting and analysis of accounting information, then followed by what? Posting into a journal, then from journal into ledger. Now that we are done with the journal and we know that the format of journal is date, particular, uh, debit and credit, then we are going to go to now form what? To now form the ledger, to form the ledger. And like I said, ledger is principal book of account. This is the permanent record where information are transferred from the journal into what? Into the, uh, into the uh, ledger, from the journal into the ledger. So let's see how we are going to, uh, let's see how we prepare the ledger. So the format for the ledger is that we have two sides. We have the left hand side and the right hand side. The left hand side start for the what for the debit side. Now, if we are using T format anyway, why the uh, like right hand side is for also work for uh the right hand side, uh, the credit side. So we have debit and the credit side. So are the two sides that we have. So what are the information that we have there? We need dates. We need the date in which the transaction actually occur. Then after the day, we have the particulars. The particulars also relates to if more information, giving more information about the transaction. We didn't want to have about the transaction. Is it a receipt transaction, credit set transaction? What is the name of the person? Or how many quantity if they are supplying anything? How many quantity have you supplied that have been what that have been uh that have been approved? How many how many of them that have been approved and how, how many did you supply? So that's what that's the uh, uh particulars about that. So we have the journal folio. The journal folio is ability for us to trace it to the journal to know the where we have posted, where we have taken it from the journal down to the ledger they will not have the amount we have the amount so the amount also is amount is like okay how much is the transaction how is the worth of the transaction carried out they will not state the amount there so basically that's what the format that we have as the ledger now there are two sides you see we notice this place after a month after this after a month everybody stays on their own, on the on their side it means that from year down year is a new site why from a month down from but down year is what is another new site. So you're looking at this, this is a new one. That's number one. That's the debit side. This is all on the credit side. That is on the credit side. So now let's look at the first transaction. The first transaction say Israel introduced 40,000 naira cards as capital. We have we have discussed this earlier. So I I'm not going to dwell too much on it. I'm gonna move on with that. So we're talking about that. Okay, fine. With the cash and capital have been introduced into the business. Uh, cash and capital that have been introduced into the business. Uh, sorry, uh, cash have been introduced in form of capital into the business. So capital is one giving it. And we said that the rule says that what? Credit the giver. So if you look at this one, we have the name of our ledger here. We have the capital account. It means every other information that relates to capital can be found under this ledger, can be found under this ledger. So let's look at that. Can you see we have July? So we have the July to July 1, cash of 40,000, cash of 40,000. So you leave that information, you leave the information like that. So we now move on to the, we move on to the uh, second transaction, says that John or uh, July to Israel borrow 60,000 to purchase a van. So now if you the van, you may remember we did that, we did like four entries on that. The first one is when the loan was collected. So we have okay when the loan was collected. What did we do? Oh, that was true. So we did. We open loan account and the cash account. We open loan account and cash account, and the loan account is actually liability account. So now we are increasing it by sixty thousand naira. It means that it should be on the credit side. It means it should be on the on the credit side. Then another one also is the, the second layer goes to the uh to the cash. Second leg goes to the cash. So if you look at it, let's go down. Let's look at look at the cash accounts. Okay, this is the cash account. So we have the cash account here. Can you see? We have the capital. Can you see the name of it? How much do we have? 30,000 era. 30,000 era. So uh, this 30,000 should be 60. 
So this, this is capital. This is sixty hand. This is loan sixty thousand. Can you see? This is sixty thousand. Yes. This is the loan sixty thousand. That's sixty thousand naira. So after that, we have the next one that we have is the uh second leg. The second leg we now go to from van motor vehicle to the cash. So now that we have recorded the amount, now that we have recorded the amount inside the cash, you can now come in and, put, and take it out. Can you see? So reducing the asset, you do what? You debit it. You debit it. We want to reduce the assets. And cash account is an asset account. So you credit it. So what this money, it means that you are converting this money to van and you are putting them under no current assets. Under no current current assets. So we have that. So if you look at the motor van now, if you look at motor van, there should be 60,000 there. Mm. Can you see? That's 60,000. So we have July, July 2. What is purple cash? Cash means that the purpose that based on this one now, ledger, they normally use the word there, the ledger that make it reference to. So it will be easier for traceability purpose. So for traceability purpose, it's very easy and good to go. So we have the formation like that. So we have that. Then after that, the next one that we have says, uh, okay. The next one that we have is the word, uh, Israel buy inventory for 18,000. Israel buy inventory for 18,000. So if I want to record that, I would like to record that. So I'll just come here and go to inventory buy purchase account. Can you see my purchase account and credit? I'm debiting it because it's, it relays in line with expense account. So I'm debiting it because it's one receiving it. Then the one that is giving it is what? Uh, yeah, the yeah, purchase account is receiving it. And the one that is giving it is, um, let me check his name again, uh, inventory. So, but this time around, it will not be under inventory, it will not be under cash account. It's on credit, it's going to be under trade payable. So if you look at the trade payable, so let's look at trade payable. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Okay. Okay, now this is payable. Can you see this is a payable? We have the 18,000 naira in stock, the 18,000 naira payable, 18,000. Then after that, let's move on to the next one. If we move on to the next one. We have Israel pays the supplier ten thousand. Israel pays the supplier ten thousand. So if Israel pays the supplier ten thousand, so how do we record that? It means that trade payable we have to what is a liability account, and we said that any liability account that is decreasing, what do you to do? You debit it. Now trade payable is decreasing because it's payable. Eighteen thousand dollars was payable before, but now we have paid part of what was payable. So it means that it has to decrease. And the other says that anytime we are decreasing liability, it should be what it should be debit debt. So let's see the way it was done. Uh, payable. Okay. Let's see the way it was done. I'm trying to look for the ledger. Okay, yeah. So this is uh, okay. Oh, sorry. I'm looking for. Yeah, is that pay supplier? Okay, so we pay supplier. So if we pay supplier, cash account and pay payable is involved. So we look at the pay pay. How much do we pay? We paid uh ten thousand. Uh, can you see that? So our trade pool, we have reduced the amount. This eighteen thousand and that's on this side. We have reduced it by what? By ten thousand. Nera. The after that we now go ahead and go into cash. You can you see cash? Then what is the cash yet? Paid payable of ten thousand nera. So we have done that accounting entry for that. Then after that, the other one you need to do is uh. So we have uh Israel pay its supplier. Now this Israel pay its supplier is ten thousand. We have done that. Israel says inventory for twelve thousand nera cash. So for Israel to say inventory of 10,000 uh, 10, so we have to look for number one, the cash account. Number two is what? The sales our revenue account. These are the two accounts that we have to look out for. Now, if you look at this, is sales account. What is the amount? The sales account, like I said, is an income account. 
And anytime there's an increase in an income, what do you do to it? You credit that amount. You credit that ledger with the amount. So looking at this now, can you see the first one is what? Can you see? Lovely. Lovely. Then after that, we now have our cash. So, so let's look at our cash because the second leg has to be in cash. All right, let's see, let's see. Oh, okay. This is your second leg. Can you see that? So your second leg will always be in the right place that you want it to be. So, but you have to be careful to know the one that is right. Okay. So after that being said, uh, another one that we have here is the uh, July sale. Israel sells the inventory for 9,000 naira on credit. Now on credit, what changes there is just that Instead of you putting it on bank, you're not going to put it on bank. Now we're going to be trade receivables because you have nexus on credit. It means that they are subject to you to pay back. That's an asset. That's what called the trade receivables. Then we have another one. July 10th, Israel received 8,000 of ordinary work of the money owned to him by the customer. Israel received 8,000 of the money owned to him by the customer. Now, the first one is that what? That is a mixes of 9,000 naira in on credit. So you look at if you look at sales, let's check out sales account. Um, so you give me some time. My my system is hanging. Okay, we are back. So now looking, in, let's look at sales. Now can you see sales here? July same. Can you, if we have trade receivables, not cash. How much of the trade receivable is nine thousand? So if you look at our trade receivables, where is our trade receivables here? Yeah. Oh, can you see? 9,000. Then after that, we now what? We make cash. We make cash of 10, of 8,000. So we come here and put debit it. So we are trying to reduce the amount that we owe, which was 9,000 before, to what? So 8 to 1,000 by removing 8,000, by paying 8,000, so by them paying us. So they are, so our trade receivables, our client has paid us 8,000 out of 9,000. So logically thinking, the whole lot 1,000 more, right? But the second leg of this one will be fine in cash account. Let's look at cash account, the second leg. Can you see that? Trade receivables. That's why I said the particulars of the item is always what? The name of the other account for easy traceability, for easy traceability. So after you have done all that, then the next is for us to now close up our financial, our ledger. So how do we close up our, our ledger? We add up one on the other side. We add up the uh, the one on the debit side, and we add up on the one on the credit side. So after we have done up with the add up, we now look at which one is higher, which one is lower. So we normally remove the lower from the higher so that we can able to get the other lower angle that we match up to that one that it was higher. So it means that if you have two now, so if you like left and right and uh, left and right, this one is twenty thousand. This one is ten thousand. So it means that I need something to bring this one up. The body have to be on the same side. So I need something to bring it up to that side. So if I have this one is 20,000, 20, let us use this figure that will be easy to identify. So this one is 20,000, this one is 15,000. So I'm like this. But for it to balance, I have to come here. And what we like to do, I need to add the difference of 5,000 Naira to it. So that is, that is the way we balance it. Now, if you look at this side now, or the capital account, we have 40,000 40, Naira on the credit side. But on the debit side, no figure. On the debit side, no figure. So for us to have a good figure on the debit side, so what we do is that we do balance carry down and write the difference there. It means that will be your opening balance for the next year or for the next month or the next month. So let's look at loan account as well. Or they are also this. They are also the same. So we have six thousand naira here. Then we have six thousand naira here. So let's look at the. Um, okay, let's look at cash. Let's look at cash accounts. Now, if you look at cash, if we add up everything here, it will give us 110. If we add up everything on the debit side, it will give us 110. But if we add everything, everything here on the credit side, it will give us, before this, 40,000. Let's add 60,000 plus 10,000, will give us what? 70,000. So, which means that 70,000 naira, we know, oh, well, then compared to 110, there's a difference there. And what is the difference? The difference is 40. The difference there is 40,000. That's the difference between the what, the debit side and the credit side is 40,000. They cannot go ahead and say, okay, balance carry down is 40,000. Is 40,000. Okay. 
So that has been said. So we now, okay, so now we have looked into, we have talked about a lot of things. Uh, we have talked about a lot of things. We have talked about journal. We are talking about, we have talked about ledger. So the next question, we, because of time, we will not be able to start the next question now, but we'll be uh, in the next class, we will look at the question theory, then probably move on to adjustment. Year or uh, balance and year end, uh, end of the year adjustment. Please, you need to study ahead of the class for that. Okay, so any question? Any question? Because we started below behind the class, so we are unable to cover, go cover, cover. Any question so far? Any question? If you have any question, please, you can just drop a chat. Uh, they can use the chat button. If you don't have any question, let me know as well in the chat button. Uh, just want to know if you're on the same page, if you are following me. So, any questions so far? Kindness, can you hear me? Okay, lovely. Okay, lovely. So that okay. Oh, no questions. Okay, thank you, thank you. Please, I uh, will uh, beg of you try to practice, try to practice the question, try to practice the question theory, uh, question theory. So in case it's not clear, uh, when we are when I'm explaining it in the next class, it will be clearer. Okay, so try to practice question theory because it involves uh transaction, reusing ledger and journal. And remember, journal is actually what is the first primary, first place primary book of record, and it's also used to record credit sales. It's also used to record credit sales, and it's also used to transfer or to transfer one figure from one account to another account. So you need to you need to know you need to know the uh, you need to understand it. So if you are not going to with it, it's okay. We will explain more in the next class. Okay. Uh, apologies for starting late. I didn't know. I, I actually don't know the reason. Probably maybe you came online before or so. But next class, we shall continue that, that next class. So I wish you love in the See you next class. Thank you very much for your time. Bye for now.